Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here today. I am so glad to be joined by this incredible worshiper and songwriter, Meredith Malden. Uh, she created a ministry called Song Lab. She spent seven years pioneering uh, the worship and songwriting culture at Worship Room in, I mean, at Upper Room in Dallas. And the music is just so powerful, so amazing. And we're here to talk about a new album that's coming out, The Turning, and just worship in general and how God led her to this amazing place. So Meredith, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Yes, it's such an honor to be here. And it's my favorite subject to talk about Jesus and worshiping him. So oh, I love that. I truly love that. You know, um, I, I watched a brief in interview that you had with your husband um, uh, just a year ago, I think. And you guys were just talking about how you got to the place of of being a model and an actor or act voice actress to worship. Um, and I think, I mean, it's a, it's a really cool story. So maybe you can give us the cliff notes, but how do you go from, from being a voice actress um, and in that world to just finding your voice in worship? Yeah, I mean, it's always just, just, it's kind of just one of those crazy journeys that you go through that the Lord just meets you smack dab in the middle of it. <laughs> And you can't help, but when you encounter, because he is the most irresistible one. And so it's like when you encounter the truth and you encounter um, the one that you love that much, you know, that loves you and knows what you're called to, when he asks you um, to be a worshiper of him, it's like everything else just kind of pales in comparison. Um, so yeah, I was on that journey. We were doing the acting and the, the model and the whole thing and moved to Los Angeles, going to be lights in the entertainment industry. Um, I was a Christian, um, but it's one of those things where we just listened. My husband had just had an encounter with Jesus and he was just hungry and just wanted to know anything and everything. And he just wanted to devour the word and devour. He just listened to sermons all the time. And he found a place that was, um, you know, speaking or teaching six days a week basically to homeless people mostly, <laughs> but he would preach six days a week every day. And so Michael would go and um, he would go. And then uh, every message was like, lay down your life. It's not about your life. It's about giving your life to Jesus and letting him lead. And so long story short, we heard that message enough that we were like, Lord, whatever you want. And we ended up in the Middle East um, doing mission work. And yeah. through that, I just encountered the Lord saying, would you be willing to lay everything down and be a worshiper of me? And it just is one of those things when the King of Kings asks you to do that and you just see the magnitude of what that really means. Like I said, everything else just pales in comparison. So that's just been our life journey is to go, Lord, what does it look like to truly worship you? I don't want to perform for you. I don't want to perform for man. I want to worship you. And so that has been our journey. And, um, you know, we're still just tapping the surface. We feel like there's so much more to explore because he's, you know, he's so big and so great. So, right. Yeah, that's powerful. Um, I love, too, that you, you know, you had talked about the type of songs, you know, that you felt compelled to write. You kind of did an assessment of what was out there and you realized there was a gap missing. Can you kind of touch on that? Because, um, I, I honestly think that that's why, so I'm a worship leader as well, and oh. um, yeah, and it's why I identify with the worship that you guys are doing, because there is that different, it's a different, the, 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 the call, you know, to God is different, the cry to God is different in what you guys are doing. Can you kind of talk to that? Yeah, like we would just, it's, you know, it's kind of a whole journey on how we discovered this, but it was one of those things where we were asking for blueprints at the upper room and, and the Lord was like, what if you threw a banquet in honor of me every week? What if you threw a banquet in honor of me every time you came together in the prayer room? What would that look like? What were, what would be the testimonies you'd give and what would be the songs that you would sing? sing? And in that moment, I started to just read the, the lyrics of the songs that we were choosing and realizing a lot of times we'd hit a ceiling. And I'm like, why do we hit a ceiling in worship? Like, you know how sometimes like people are worship was good. Worship was not good. And you're like, what, what is that? Like when you feel like you're like, okay, we're, we're all the music's doing the thing it always does to get everybody's hands raised. We're doing all the things, but what's missing. And it, as we started to look into it and I started reading the words, I'm like, wow, we're talking about ourselves. 
We're talking about what we want for God, what we want to do for God or what we want from him. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, like there's corporate prayers and there's all those things and they're beautiful. And the Lord knows we need them. He knows we need things. You know, he's not opposed to that. But I realized that when we would focus not on our, our needs and our lack, but would like put that aside for a minute and start to focus on who he is and what he's done, like, man, the room just shifts. It's like heaven is attracted to the worship of Jesus. So when we would start to honor him for who he is and what he's done, all of a sudden it's just like the, the ceiling opened up and like you couldn't help but just like worship him. And so we just started to, I, I had this revelation on thank you. It was like the power of thank you. You know, it's one of the most, he says, we enter his gates with Thanksgiving and we overlook that a lot of times. And we're like, what is it that like, if somebody just comes and says, thank you, you're like, for what, you know? And then they like, oh, well, because you're this or because you're that and it moves your heart. And so I was like, well, where are songs that just say thank you to God? And so I couldn't find them. So we just started writing them. It was just one of those yeah. things that were like, we had such a revelation that we're like, then we're going to write from that place of just wanting to honor and minister to him. So that's kind of where it started, but I love it. Yes. And thank you because yeah. we needed those songs. That's also awesome. I love that you just started to write them. So let's talk about the album. It's eight yeah. songs, the turning. I know you have a single you remain that's out now. Um, but talk, talk about that, just the album and just the heart behind this record. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the songs, um, and it came from it like a dream that I had, um, but it was just like having songs that really focus our eyes on Jesus. So I would say almost all of these songs are songs that I've sang for years in my prayer closet. Like they're not necessarily writing room songs. They're not just songs that are just like, okay, this is a good idea. These are songs that I've just like gone through something with the Lord. And they're the songs that I have like held on to for years. Um, a lot of them were written at that when I, at my season with the upper room. And so it just felt like this super special season, part of the turning. There's a bunch of reasons that I named it the turning, but one of them is like to turn the eyes of the bride to Jesus, to look at how awesome he is, but also the turning of a page. It's like, we're turning to a new chapter. It's like, it feels like this is a new season and the Lord loves to turn things for his good, you know, for our good. And, to, you know, and so I just feel like it's just the season of that. And, and these songs, represent that and my heart to love on Jesus so I love that you know there's a lot of talk um, about worship music today and whether it's emotionalism or it's scripturally based How, like what are your thoughts on that as a worship writer as someone who genuinely wants to just create offerings to God in this way yeah well you know when you say emotions like I love that he gave us all of those things he says, love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your, mind, all your strength, everything. He gave us our emotions for us to love him with our emotions is not a bad thing. Now we can't base things on our feelings because feelings come and go with the winds, you know, and they can come and go with coffee or a good nap, <laughs> but to align our hearts with truth, despite our feelings, and then to feel emotional about that to me is not emotionalism. It's basing our heart and aligning it with truth and responding to the Lord who deserves all of that. You could say football games are emotionalism. Um, but to me, to be able to give that kind of an emotion to the Lord is an offering. And it's not made for, it's not to be distracting. It's not for other people. Just like David danced before the Lord and it looked like a distraction to some, he wasn't doing it for them. He was doing it for him. And so I think it's all the spirit behind it more than anything. It's the, like, is my heart postured to give everything to the Lord? Then I think it's an offering. It's not emotionalism, but that's my, that's my heart in it. Yeah, I actually agree. You know, it's, it's aligning our hearts with the truth and still being able to give that expression. I do think that sometimes those statements and things like that come out of a lack of understanding the relationship. Um, and just my opinion, but I think, um, yeah, I love what you said there. How can we encourage worship today? So for instance, the person that might not understand that really deep connection that you're talking about with God, I'm, I'm giving vocal lessons to a young worship leader now. And I, I know that 
there is a, you know, the, that's the challenge with worshipers and even churches and even interdenominational things and stuff like that. Sometimes it's hard to get people to understand what the heart of worship can truly be in that freedom, you know, that you were talking about. How do you encourage um, the, the person that might not understand worship the way you understand it to get into that deeper place? Yeah, I mean, I think some of it is just like also teaching that the the biblical words for praise, you know, there's so many expressions of it. It's not just one expression. Like one of the words is tequila, not tequila, but tequila praise, which is that spontaneous combustion of the heart. You know, there's also these, the ones that are just like halal, which is like a hallelujah. It's like, it's to boast it's to be clamorously loud. Like it's like all of these different ones. So there's all these different expressions. There's also praise that's reverent, that's bowing down, that's, you know, honor. So it's just, there's so many different types of definitions in the word praise that we lump into that one word. Um, and so when you start to look in that and then you start to just keep pushing, not pushing, keep pointing them to Jesus because you can't worship what you haven't beheld. The more you begin to look at him and the more you start to encounter who he is, we were limited to what we know at this point, but the more you keep pursuing him and starting to see him and everything, it's hard not to respond in different ways, you know? And so it's one of those things you don't have to force yourself, you know, to be crazy and dance and do all the things. Sometimes it's aligning with, even if our feelings aren't, you know, going on, if it's time to dance, we'll say sometimes like, Hey, this feels like there's a time of celebration right now. Sometimes we don't feel like dancing, but sometimes it's aligning with what the Lord is doing despite our feelings. Um, but a lot of times it's just a matter of, you know, going, okay, what's the Lord doing right now? What's he doing in me? Some people might be quiet and that's okay. You know, you can meet him where you are at that moment, but it's just hard because you don't want to judge other people who are encountering in a different way than you. So that's kind of what I try to encourage and just keep pointing them to the man, Jesus, you know, because once you start to experience him, you'll start to like cry or do things that normally you stop caring what other people think. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's important in this day and age to turn our attention to worship God and not worship what we think or what we want or, you know, our goals in life. Um, is there anything particular in the album or a song in the album that you really feel like kind of talks to the temperature of the world today and just kind of how we as Christians can respond? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a there's a couple and, you know, there's a couple songs that I would th say speak to that. The You Remain song is um, is just one of those, the, the bridge is when I see your face, I wish I'd given more away. You know, it was like uh, my heart cry when I felt like the Lord was asking me to lay down the upper room, um, which was one of the hardest things for me to do. But to go, I'll never regret the things that I give to you and knowing that he's bigger and that despite our feelings now, if we can get an eternal perspective rather than just an earthly perspective, it'll change the way we think and do things. And so to get our hearts back on that, I think is super key. Um, the other one is uh, the uh, For My Good is the song. And it's just like, um, it was so out of my wheelhouse. I was standing in my kitchen, not thinking about songwriting in the morning, like not. And all of a sudden I heard the, like, you're working all things out for my good. And I went, that is not something I to totally write, typically write, wasn't thinking about it. It was right at 2020. You're working all things out for my good. He may not have ordained the mess, but he'll use it for us to get closer to him and he'll use it for our good. And so I think if we can keep our eyes on the hope instead of on the, the circumstances that we're in, keep looking to the answer rather than to the problem, like staring at the problem. I think we're going to see the hope that he can turn it around and make it beautiful. You know? So those are the few songs that stick out just off the top of my head for the yeah. team. Well, thank you so much, Meredith. Is there anything else that you want to add? Um, I think more than anything, I'm just you know, I'm, I, I truly believe that the songs that will minister to you at, you know, at your season is like, I, I think that for you to write yourself as well, and I'm not saying to write it for the world. I'm not saying that it needs to be recorded, but like in your own time, in your own revelation of what the Lord is doing in you, for you to sing that to him, 
honors him more than anything. It's not, I mean, we all have these songs that yes, they go and give language for other people to encounter, but the Lord loves your song the most. So even if you're not a songwriter, even if you're not a worship leader, for you to sing the little things that the Lord has given you, sing your thanks to him. It really does open the heavens over your home. Um, so I just encourage you for, to do that. Um, and he loves it.